inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Hi, welcome back to Know Your Mother's Hobbies. Today we're doing the first hero. We're into the heroes, baby. It's the barbarian. Yeah, baby! So here we go. We got our barbarian uh, all zenithalled up. Now, you might notice that my zenithal's a little crunchy. There's some little spots of, of wear, and that's just my mistakes. Uh, I have some troubles, some issues, but whatever. Let's uh, cover it up with some paint. All right, so first things first, we're gonna take this Gorgrunt of fur. Any kind of orangey, uh, red, warm brown is gonna be this uh, loincloth color. And you can see, boom, immediately making mistakes. Don't worry, it's just paint, forget about it. Keep going. So a lot of these little um, like leather areas, we're gonna do this warm brown and they're all gonna match. So the loincloth, uh, he's got some wrist wraps, uh, some leg wraps. Uh, stuff like that. Oh, and um, you could do the stuff around his waist all as fur, but in the artwork, it is like some torn leather from his, his waist wrap, so I do it that way. You can see here, I'm making all kinds of mistakes. I'm not sweating it. We can just paint over it. It's just paint, man. Just take it easy. We're just blocking stuff in. Speaking of painting over, I got this wraith bone. You know the drill. Uh, we just take this and paint over all the stuff. We just clean up as we go. We just clean up as we go in this step because we're base coating this boy. Clean up as we go. So you make mistakes, yeah, fix it. I'm gonna make a bunch of mistakes you're gonna see and the model's going to change. I'm not going to note it every time. We just fix it as I go. All right, so he's got a bluish kind of leather going on. He's got a lot of accents of a bluish kind of color, so I'm using Pterodon Turquoise for that. Just go around, put that in all those bluish spots. If you're following the artwork, you can see where some of those are. Uh, so that's this little part to his loincloth. He's got some wrist wrappy bits and little decals and whatnot. Underneath the sword grip, put it in there. On the wrists, check it out. A wild wood, this is for his little sandals, little sandy bits. Uh, just go around, be delicate. You don't have to be too precise, you know, get some of that overhang. Uh, it's all gonna look like shadow if it if it ends up going around. And uh, you know, the contrast paints are great for that. They seep into the recesses and whatnot. So, you know, just do your best to follow that line. And uh, you, you can always just clean up, clean up as you go, right? Um, on these little wraps on his legs, he's got little uh, like ropes and whatnot. You can see I'm not too accurate on this foot. Uh, I'm not sweating the small stuff on, on this guy. As long as you put some lines in there, it'll end up looking like something. And then uh, don't forget he's got some wraps up there as well. Snake bite leather for his belt, easy peasy. Nuln oil, we're doing the same thing we did on those goblins. So it seems like forever ago we did those goblins. But we're doing the same thing. We got some, we got some like fur. So we're gonna use just Nuln oil instead of something like the silicanum because it's a little bit lighter and it's gonna focus on the recesses. We do want that little bit of gray tint, but we don't want an overwhelming gray tint. Catch my drift?
Now we're gonna use basilicanum gray. We're gonna use it on that big old sword, that big chonker. So uh, put that on there. Uh, make sure you get it in those little runes. They're, those are actually divots. You can fill them, fill them up. Uh, make sure that they get hit with a good amount because you want them filled in. You want that detail to really show. And don't forget the little metal bits on his wrists. Black Templar for the hair. We're almost done the blocking. So close. Just take your time with the hair. Don't be afraid of mistakes. We can clean up at this point. Don't worry about it. You can clean up at any point, honestly, but just reinforce that. Don't worry about it. So here we go, just putting that Black Templar on the hair, blocking him out. We got that Gullum in flesh, baby! Here we go, blocking in the gold. He doesn't have a lot of gold on him. So it's just the sword hilt and his big macho man, you know, world champion wrestler belt. So, put those parts with gold, uh, with the Gullum in. And we got a lot of flesh on this boy. We are gonna Gullum in flesh him up. So put that Gullum in flesh all over. Put it all over the place. Hit up his legs, hit up his feet, hit up his arms, hit up his hands, chest, back. Bice, tries, lats, straps, quads, calves, you got it. Lube them all up, baby. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, this guy's supposed to be tan. Are you just going to whitewash this dude? Trust me, this is, this is how I'm going to do a tanned guy. We are going to make him tanned. Just trust the process. It's going to take a little while. Uh, I don't want to make a new recipe for skin and you'll see what we're gonna do to use my usual recipe for Caucasian skin and make it tan. You love it or hate it. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's a lazy man way to make recipes. So here we go. Just put that gullaman all over the place. This is the last of it. Boom. Now first things first with the layering uh, we're gonna take this same Gorgrunta, we're gonna take that Tarragon, Turquoise, we're gonna reinforce some of these shadows down here. Um, so just go like a layer or two of just tracing over some of those, those shadow lines, like where you would want to accent and add a bit of shadow. So under the belt, for example, uh, outlining this fur to be like it's under the fur, and then some of the creases in the folds and whatnot. Then we come back with that dollar store white. We're gonna do some dry brushing of the edges just to pick out some, some quick detail here, uh, some quick highlight. Just like we've been doing with those capes and stuff, we're just gonna get a tiny, tiny little bit on there to just reinforce some of those textures. This loincloth, uh, some of the, the rawhide leather parts do actually have a really nice texture to it. So this will help to bring some of that out as well. You'll see on this back highlight there, uh, but yeah. We're just going to come in here and we're going to do a little bit of that, really pop it up. Don't forget the, the waist. We're also going to do the leg wraps. You thought all we were going to do is make them dark? No, baby. We're going to get some detail in there. Uh, so hit those leg wraps. Hit that arm wrap as well, the one with the wrappings, like the, the corded wrappings. And uh, we're also going to hit the hair a little bit. So for the hair, I'm not doing an all over dry brush of this hair. Um, I debated whether or not I was gonna do some, some of my usual hair highlights. Um, and, and instead I decided, you know what, let's just do a little bit of this. Uh, if you're dry brushing highlights on the hair, especially black hair, it can just make it look dusty and gray and make the person look old. So be careful of that. Uh, I, I stuck to mainly places that would get really highlighted. Um, thinking about how I normally would highlight a dark hair like this or, or brown hair or whatnot. We're just going to take Agrax Earthshade and go over the wrappings uh, so to mute down some of those white, white, white highlights. Retributor Armor in here, painting in the metallics. We're going metallics, baby. We're getting these bold gold in here. Uh, don't do what I did <laughs> and paint the top of it. That is actually fur. So uh, I go back and fix it, but don't paint the top little furry part. 
And as usual, we hit that with a flush state gloss because I like the shiny bit. I like the added shine for my metallics. And then gunmetal, we're just gonna put that on the wrists. You'd think we'd put it on the sword. We're doing a kind of stony, rough, non-metallic sword. So just put that uh, gunmetal only on the wristbands. Top it off with some known oil gloss to reinforce the shine. All right, layering up with Cadian Flesh Tone. We're just gonna even out the tones that the flesh has, you know, because using Gulliman Flesh, it contrasts is awesome, but also can, you know, not always be as smooth and consistent as you want. So we're gonna use this Cadian Flesh Tone to bring back the mid-tones and to smooth out some of the colors. You'll notice that Gulliman is uh, a little bit yellowed in the highlights. So the high highlights, when the contrast is working and pulling away from, from the topmost raised edges. Don't worry about it, paint over it. Uh, if you're using this specific paint, the consistency is thin enough that it'll blend. And uh, if you're not using this specific paint, just thin it enough like, you know, like your boy Duncan tells you, thin your paints, make it like milk, two thin coats. Uh, you can do that here. Definitely, definitely are able to do that here. Stay away from the most shadowed areas. And you can see, especially here on the back, how that thinner paint is gonna layer in and kind of blend where we want it to. So focus on the upper two thirds and smoothing out any pooling or ugly parts and just making this flesh look consistent. Uh, you don't need to cover the whole thing as you've seen on the back. I did not cover the most shadowed areas. Even on this big old bicep, I'm not covering the most shadowed areas underneath, underneath the arm. Uh, so you don't have to go that far either. We're not covering the whole thing. Don't think of it like that. Okay? Do your best. It's going to look great. I realize that this is my first time doing a, like a skin tutorial of, of like a human skin. So uh, I might be talking a little more than usual about the reasons why I'm doing things or, or whatnot. I hope that's okay. His left flesh here, we're going to do that for an added highlight. We're going further. We're bringing it up. Here we go. So again, we're going to do not the upper two thirds, but maybe like the upper half. Upper one third. Something like that. And we're going to just bring in some of these highlights. The back of this model is a really, really good uh, space to, to practice these volumetric areas. Same with the biceps, uh, the both arms uh, are great to practice that kind of thing. Identifying shapes and hills and peaks and valleys and whatnot, where you're actually gonna put your highlights. This crunchy, muscly model is great for that. And then with the face, we're just going to focus on, you know, the most raised areas, those cheekbones, the size of the forehead, and the chin and nose. As well as, you know, if you're feeling brave, you can do a little bit of a line work down the side of the mouth. Because that can, you know, softening a line down there can uh, really accentuate the shapes and, and curve of the face. So here we go, Pallid Witch Flesh. I like to use Pallid Witch Flesh. Uh, on all of my kind of Caucasian f flesh tones, I guess. Uh, all my Caucasian flesh. You might have seen this if you saw the uh, the Trunks, Super Saiyan Trunks video uh, where I did some normal skin. Not some monster skin or undead skin or skeleton non-existent skin. Uh, <laughs> you know, humans. Um, so uh, you might have seen that there. And I, I like to use this as... I don't want to call it like a greasy or a shiny or, or like even a sweaty, but like I, I like using it to really add a, a pop of volume. I feel like putting this white bright highlight of Pallid Witch Flesh up there really pops the volumes. Um, you might find that you like it, you might find you hate it, so do it or don't. It's up to you how far you push your flesh. I like to put this little dot up here like one quarter height uh, on the volumes.
All right, here we go. The last of everything. We're using dollar store white here. Just do those furry areas. You thought we forgot about them? We didn't. Just put that white in there. Pop up those furry, furry areas. You're done ski. Don't forget the, the hair on the, the belt. And you can see that I've already fixed the belt from before where I put too much gold on it. Uh, now that is fur. And you're going to see what we're doing with that fur. We're just putting white on it. Boom, done. Easy peasy. And you know what? If you make a mistake on these furry parts, we started with a white. Just put null oil back on, wait for it to dry, and try again. Easy. Okay, here comes what we're doing with that sword. We're doing the dry brush. It might be familiar. This might be familiar if you saw the Dread Warriors. Uh, if not, boom, we're doing dry brush. We're just taking that dry brush and hitting all the edges. Look at that, done. Uh, here we go, chrome. Add those little highlight hot ping ping pings. Ping ping ping. And making that metallic really shine. Here we go, my secret to tan skin, Agrax Earthshade, the whole freaking model. <laughs> uh, seriously though, we're gonna use it as a glaze. So you could thin it down with a medium if you want to better control the consistency. Uh, if you don't thin it, make sure it is not pooling. We do not want to use Agrax Earthshade to be shading the model. We wanna use it as a glaze. We wanna glaze the model. And it's gonna keep all the highlights uh, all the volumes and shapes that we've, you know, added contrast and blocked in and whatnot. Uh, all that work that we did, it's going to keep it. Now here, I do leave some in that little cut on the arm because I felt like, you know, well, it's, it's his cut on the arm. It's his scars, and I wanted to add some detail in there that I felt I had painted over. Uh, same with the face. Uh, to reinforce a little bit of the face shadows in the eye sockets and whatnot, I did let some pool there. But generally speaking... We're glazing this uh, Agrax Earth shade on. Look at that, he's already he's already a tanned guy. He, he spent an hour in the booth, he's done. Uh, Caraberg Crimson, we're not using this to make like bloody cuts, uh, but just to tint the area, that's all. And when you're done with that, we do our base like normal. Even though he's got a sculpted base, boom, base like normal. And if you wanna see the recipe, you could check that out in many, many of the monster videos we've done before. Yeah, here we go. We're done. Barbarian time. First hero finished. Uh, what do you guys think? You think we did a good job? You think that's... Uh, what do you think of my easy peasy beginner's tan? Right? You just focus on mastering one skin tone. And from that one skin tone, you now have two skin tones. Bada bing. Here we go with the alternate sculpt. Uh, I tested my recipes on this sculpt. I'm going to be doing that all the way through going to be testing the recipes with the alternates uh, until we have no alternates and then boom we're just winging it baby uh, but I think she came out pretty good I'm really thrilled with both of these I think they look great uh, what do you think are you finished the monsters you guys catch up you follow along uh, how about the heroes I've seen some people already talking about heroes and how they're going through it are you doing all right uh, is this going to be helpful for you, identifying, you know, these shapes and patterns and schemes and whatnot? I hope it is. A little late, but apologies for my voice. I'm overcoming a cold. But if you like the video anyway, you know, give me one of them thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please do so. It really helps out. Hit that bell icon. Let me know in the comments down below what hero you're excited to see painted. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.